So I'm at Hinkley Point C with Rob Jordan, who's the Project Construction Director. Thank you for your time here this morning. Welcome, really appreciate welcome. being able welcome, to mate. be on this side and see everything that's yep. happening here today. I was wondering if you could first introduce yourself and how you came from, you know, being an Aussie born in Toowoomba to working here at, you know, the yeah. biggest nuclear power plant under so, construction in the Yeah, UK. look, um, blessed. Uh, Will, you know, born in Toowoomba, uh, left Toowoomba at an early age, grew up really in uh, North Queensland, Innisfail, Cairns area. Did an apprenticeship at the South Johnston Sugar Mill as a fitter and turner for a couple of years and then entered the power industry as, as an operator for many years, going around Queensland power stations, you know, Tarong, Calloid, these, these power stations. Eventually started travelling the world uh, building new power stations. So Malaysia, Turkey, Wales, the wonderful Wales. Uh, spent time, a uh, short time in Israel, back to Malaysia. So travelling the world, uh, delivering projects, focusing on construction and largely power. Um, and then I ended up, you know, joining Energy de France and CGM here in England, building Hinkley Point C, which is in my my career definitely the greatest project um, of my life, and I believe is probably the greatest project in the world. You know, every day here. I mean, will you know behind me the biggest land-based crane in the world, Unit One reactor. Um, we've reached massive milestones this week. You know, we've, and, you know, we're blessed, 13,000 people coming through the door every day, 107 nationalities, I mean, it's a global project. Mm. And it's not only being built by an, an international uh, group of citizens, an international uh, workforce, but it's also all about uh, delivering a credible solution to, to a global issue, mm. uh, which they're doing. So, you know, I'm absolutely honoured to be here. And, uh, but I can't wait to come home. Uh, I need to finish this. And we're on track, you know. By the end of the decade, we're going to have this thing running. And, you know, providing uh, low carbon energy to a large population in the UK. And in doing that, delivering a credible solution to climate change. Well, hopefully there'll be some work for you in Australia soon. I was wondering, what's it like day to day working at a huge site like this? What does your role actually comprise of? Well, uh, sort of conducting the orchestra really. But look, you know, I focus largely on health and safety issues. I spend a lot of time on industrial relations issues but, and a huge focus on quality mm. because when you build nuclear, uh, it's got to be right. And if it's not right, you do it again until it is right. So a huge focus on the quality of the product. And you know, health and safety, people, quality of the product is more important than the schedule mm. because we need to get it right. Because look, this will be providing low carbon energy for the people of the UK for the next 60 years as a minimum. Because then more, you know, there's a likelihood there could be a life extension. So it could be a hundred years in operation for the people of the country. So we need, it needs to be right. Mm. And we focus very much on delivering and building in accordance with the specification, which is approved by the nuclear regulator. And, mm. uh, and we do it yeah. every day. And, and look at this, Will. It's incredible, isn't it? Oh, it's so Massive incredible. Massive project. Yep. Nothing like this in Australia. So no, now, what's wrong? Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. But I guess moving specifically onto Hinkley C, for people who aren't aware of it or, you know, only see the headlines in Australia, you know, could you give us a bit of a context about what's happening here? The two reactors which are being built, their capacity, you know, how many home cell power, yep. you know, yep. the timeline, all those sort of things. Yeah, look, um, this unit behind us is the first of the fleet being built in the UK. Um, so we've had to go through a process of getting the design approved with the regulatory authorities in the UK, which has happened, of course, uh, procure all the design and construct. So the first one has been slightly difficult or challenging, which is normal. Um, and the second unit, just over to, to uh, behind you, uh, Will, is, is more sort of business as usual, massive learnings from the first unit. And we focus hugely on learnings. Mm. The second unit, we're building 30% quicker wow. because of the learnings from the first unit, not just in time, less people, better quality, well, less quality problems that we've had to deal with. I mean, the quality of unit one is perfection, yeah. um, et cetera. So massive learnings and size well, which you've been to in the last yes. few days, we call that unit three and unit four, will be better, better again. Yes. Because in the nuclear industry, learning is critical. And it's a big part of our philosophy, a big part of what we do every day, ensuring what you do next time is better. Nuclear is, is about doing it correctly in accordance with the specification and ensuring you learn. 
And we do that because we care about people mm. and we care about the environment. That's and why I, we do it. I think that's a huge lesson for Australia as well with this fleet effect that we're witnessing here. Yeah. And obviously, like you say, that reduces the time to build and the cost, yep. which are yep. you know huge challenges which have been brought up in Australia. I guess, you know, in, in addition to obviously the climate benefits and also obviously to grid stability and all those other yep. things here with energy security, I, I was really interested in learning a bit more about you know jobs and industry benefits here. Obviously yep. we can see that there's a lot of activity on site. Yep. It's interesting because we've got the unions in Australia which yep. are really against nuclear energy and I've right. really witnessed quite a difference in their perspective on nuclear whilst I've been in the UK. Right. So I was just wondering what you, you, know, what you hear from your workers here, obviously yep. you've got a lot here. Um, and just discussing some of the opportunities which a project like this presents. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to build an industry. It's not mm. just about building a unit. You've got to build an industry. And that's the other challenge here has been with the first for a generation, you've got to get an industry that's match fit. Um, we build here with the unions in partnership. Mm. They're very much part of, of the job. All of these people working under collective agreements, I mean, the unions are partners in delivering this project and they see the benefits. Mm. They see the future in terms of work and membership, but also in terms of developing schools in the nation. And we focus it, like for example, at the moment, we've developed over 1,500 new apprenticeships. Wow. Just from this project. We had an ambition of a thousand, we're already 50% above that. Wow. And we're gonna push and push and push. And that's about creating skills giving people transferable skills. So it's building not just an in industry for people here, but in the manufacturing, in the supply chain. And you've got to get a supply chain who's match fit. Australia probably doesn't have that. No. Because they haven't done nuclear, but they need to start. Yes. You know, some people want to walk in the streets and demonstrate. Some people want to talk about it. Some people, like people who work at Hinkley Point C, want to do something about it. Yeah. And here, we don't talk. We walk and we build and we're going to deliver a solution, not just talk about it. Yeah. So Aussies need to stop talking and do some doing. I, I agree. What's the numbers again, you know, in terms of number of workers here? I've, I yeah. think you said something like 13,000. Yeah, we, we have 13,000 come through our turnstiles every 24 hours. Wow. We're working day shift, night shifts, seven days a week. We have different work patterns, of course. We've got roughly 10,000 operatives under our collective agreements who are coming here. Numerous work patterns, because some people are traveling, etc. So we work with the workforce and have a work, uh, working pattern uh, that suits their lifestyle, suits their families. And of course, we focus a lot on, on fatigue, making sure that you know, they get that balance between work, life, and families. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an international workforce, 107 nationalities working on our project, but over 90% are from the UK. Yeah. From all over the UK, from Scotland, from Wales, from Ireland, from down here in Somerset, all here, all those people from the UK doing something, mm. making a difference, and that's what they're doing. Now, beyond, you know, fleet effect, what are the yeah. other lessons that you could share, you know, during your time here that Australia should, you know, consider whether it's, you know, skilling up um, in order to ensure that if we are to establish a civil nuclear power industry that we do it in the, you know, most efficient, most effective way? Oh, look, you've got, you've got to take learnings from around the world, mm. uh, really. And, um, and we, we have had some visitors here from Australia, but we get visitors here almost weekly wow. uh, from, from different governments from around the world. And, and you've got to be brave enough, have humility uh, to go out and learn. And then you have to, within Australia, you've got to have a supply chain that you, you need to develop. And it doesn't happen overnight. But you've got to make those decisions and that's all about leadership. So Australia needs strong leadership who are prepared to make the hard decisions. Mm. And being an Aussie here, we do it every day. Yeah. Aussies at home need to do it. Yes. How many, just out of curiosity, you know, are there Australians who work beyond yourself? You know, do you find that there are Australians, you know, working in nuclear, not only here, but, you know, more broadly in the UK? Yeah, definitely. There's, there are some other Aussies here. Um, we need to get more Aussies here, you know, so we can learn, we can take it home. 
Uh, but yeah, look, look, I've, I've been building projects all around the world and I meet Australians everywhere doing mm. construction work. I often wonder if there's more Aussies outside of Australia doing construction than in Australia, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, but no, look, we have to maximise the learnings from the globe and, and take it back to Australia. You know, mm. the world is a small place. Nuclear is a community around the world. Mm. Standards and delivery, and it's the future. Mm. So we need to work together. But the time has come to stop going up the streets with placards, make decisions, and deliver a solution. That's what we've got to do. Now, obviously, Rob, you, you would have heard a lot of the headlines that we see yep. in Australia about you know, the cost blowouts and the time blowouts and stuff on this project. Yeah. How would you respond to that? Yeah, look, my, my response is you need to understand the facts. And, and the facts are, with the first unit, as I mentioned to you before, Will, the first in a fleet is always the most difficult. First of all, you need to get a, a, a plant that is approved by the regulator within the country, put it through manufacturing, the design, uh, procure, and build. Yes. So the first unit is not the unit to use as a baseline. The second unit and subsequent units of the fleet is where we should be looking. And as I've mentioned, already the second unit we're building 30% quicker. Wow. And that's what you need to do, it's the learnings. So, and the costs are reflective of that. You know, it's cost money because of that. But look, in terms of time, we're proud of one thing. Mm. And we're proud of the fact that we're brave enough to put quality of the product ahead of time. We need to build it correctly. It's got to be right. And we do that because we care about people, we care about the environment. So we'll build this correctly. When this project's running, it'll be the safest nuclear plant in the world. Wow. Talking more broadly about uh, nuclear energy, I guess, what would you make the, the simple case for nuclear energy? If we, we are absolutely aware, I don't think there's any argument, that we need to do something different mm. uh, because it's just not sustainable. Our living standards are extremely high, we, we have high demands, so if we want to maintain those living standards, we have to do something different. And nuclear is a solution. Mm. You know, France have just announced they're going to build six more of these, and their ambition is 12. Even the French are out thinking this. What? My God. <laughs> well, we've got to make decisions. What's wrong with us? Yeah. We're just too insulated, I think, in Australia. Yeah. And we've got to look broadly and learn, be brave enough to do that. And so, yeah, massive benefits. Huh? Do you think that there's any chance we could get to net zero without a solution like nuclear energy in the mix? In Australia? Uh, well, I'm, I'm unaware, really, yeah. you know, of, of the details in Australia, to be very honest with you. Uh, but in the UK, that they are looking at the full mix, of mm. course, in terms of wind and solar. Of course, we have different climates, don't we, from mm. Australia to here. But nuclear needs to be part of the mix, doesn't it? Yeah. And this is you know, my personal opinion. It needs to be part of the mix. This will run for 60 years. Right. This runs when the sun doesn't shine. This runs when the wind doesn't blow. You've still got nuclear. It's always there mm. as the base, the base load of your country. And uh, reliable, efficient, safe. Do you think that Australia is well placed? Uh, or, you know, is it even possible for Australia to be able to have nuclear power in our country? Uh, wh wh why wouldn't it be, is, is my question. I mean, what's stopping it? Mm. And the only thing that's stopping it is leadership and the ability to make decisions. And um, sometimes you've got to make decisions that aren't popular. You can't run a country just by being popular. You've got to make decisions. And, uh, yeah, it's my personal opinion, but, you know, leadership needs to stand up mm. you know, and, uh, you know, deliver, really. Deliver what the people need. Mm. Do you think, uh, I heard earlier when we were talking, um, you know, if Australia doesn't make the steps to go nuclear now, do you think that there is a risk of us falling behind considering all the investment around the world in nuclear energy and, you know, some of those skills deficits which could occur? Do you think, you know, there is an impetus to acting now? I think, um, I think Australia's already behind, my personal opinion. I mean, the, I mean, I worked in many of the coal-fired plants in Australia. Uh, I've managed the development of some of the gas projects and really the Australian uh, uh, coal industry is on its knees, mm. isn't it? The power stations that are being fueled by coal, fossil fuels, are on their last legs in Australia and uh, they're, they're way behind already, mm. the Aussies, unfortunately, sad to say. 
Don't tell the Kiwis. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> um, I won't. Uh, and I guess, you know, what would your message be to our leaders back home in Australia, our Prime Minister, who, you know, don't even have an open mind to lifting the ban on nuclear energy in our country. What would your message be, you know, working at Hinkley, uh, the experiences that you've had around the world be to them? Yeah, I mean, my personal opinion is, um, first of all, uh, if they look at the at the benefits of a project like this to the local community and to, and to the people of the country, in terms of uh, skills development, adding value to their lives there's, and value to the local community, there's, there's massive benefits. Mm -hmm. And but besides that, there's such, uh, uh, such benefits to a really extended supply chain around the whole country. Mm -hmm. I mean, there'll be companies all over Australia and globally helping the Aussies build a plant like this. So the, the, the benefits are huge. Besides that, you get a product that delivers low carbon energy for years and years to come, 60, 70 years to come. And you're also contributing to a solution for a global challenge. So um, why wouldn't you do it? Mm. I, I don't understand why not. I think the only thing that's stopping Australia is leadership. Well, Rob, thank you so much for answering all my questions and you know, allowing me to visit this incredible site. I really do no appreciate it. And hopefully, like you say, we do have some action in Australia at some point where we can harness your expertise in some way with nuclear, but Thanks, again, really appreciate it. Nice to see it. you. Thank Welcome. You.